Welcome, welcome, welcome to my live show. Susan Winter here, joining you for another Thursday live show, answering your questions and talking about a topic that whether you know it or not, dating or relationship, you always have top of mind. The question is, is this thing that I'm doing, is this person I'm seeing, is this person I'm chatting to online, is the person that I'm with, somebody with whom I want to continue to invest my time, my trust, my energy, my hope. Whether you know it or not, the sum of everything that I'm ever asked boils down to one thing. Do I stay or do I go? Because I've had people ask me this many times over. That really is the question. When I think of the people who contact me and we do coaching, when I get all of your emails and requests for video uh, responses, it's always about, is there hope? Somebody wants somebody. Okay, The person contacting me wants a better relationship. They want answers. They want resolution with the other person and they're having difficulty. That is the root of everything that all of the relationship experts do as far as your interaction with each other. There is also the work that you do on your own to become the best partner ever. But I like to go back and forth in these discussions, sometimes talking about dating games, other times talking about relationships. I want to make sure that all of you get your needs covered. And if you have a question for me, put it in Super Chat. Gwen is so happy to have you here. Some people, Alex, nice to see you. Um, B is here, lovely, lovely. It's a little bit late. Hey, Berlin, welcome. I'm sorry that I missed you in my Munich. I realized that it's a long ways away. Now, wait, first things first, I'm so, 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 so excited about this. This is being recorded on July 13th, 2023. I'm having my first ever, 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 ever United States meet and greet. I've had private keynotes. I've had things for which I cannot invite the public. It's not a presentation. There is no fee. August 2nd, which is a Wednesday from 6 to 8, I have been given a space to meet all of you in the New York City area. There are clients I've worked with that I adore. I see you on Zoom. I talk to you on the phone, but I've never met you. This is my opportunity to meet you. So if you want to attend, it is in the financial district, Wednesday, August 2nd, between 6 to 8 p.m., I, 2023, if you're watching this later, I want you to write me media at susanwinter.net, make the subject heading New York City or NYC. My staff is going to look at it. We do vet who's coming. We have to do that include LinkedIn profiles, social profiles, a little bit about yourself. That way, you know, we do this so that everybody's comfortable and everybody's safe. So please, I'm excited about that. Oh, and Singapore, January 25th through February 2nd, I'll be available for independent private one-on-one -on -one coaching and I will be having a meet and greet. That's 2024. Write me again, media at susanwinter.net and then put Singapore in it because I'm collecting the lists now. Okay, on, on, on. Yafa, hi everyone, excited to come for Susan Wisdom. Uh, Caperson, oh my God, hello everybody, ET. Now here's the cool thing about these meet and greets. ET met Gwyneth and B and the other people when I did my Munich. I've done them all over the world. I've done Serbia, I've done Croatia, I've done Sorrento. Oh my gosh, where else? Munich, of course. I'm trying to think, but I, I know I'm, I'm glitching on something. Oh, Romania. I've, I've done, you know, I've done Bucharest. I've done Budapest. I've done everything. Never in the U.S. But what happens is I have a couple people here that got to be friends. The thing is, if you are of this understanding and you like the messaging and you like the direction that we're going in, wouldn't it be great if you're in the New York City area to meet like minds? Meet allies. E.T. is a friend of B and Gwyneth. And that was as a result of meeting at the meet and greet in Munich. Okay, 
Onward, onward. The topic is perfect timing. I love this. Many of my followers are happily partnered. And you know what's so cool? People like Jillian and Zen Maiden, they come back as often as they can just to give support. You know, they've got their partner. They're happy, but they're able to, they love the community. So, okay, what we're talking about today, is your relationship worth saving? Now, in dating, this is something that you decide text per text, meeting per meeting, and challenge per challenge. In a relationship, it is the implicit understanding that this is what we are doing. We are working together. The relationship commitment is that we will embrace our challenges and it is our dual intention that we work through them. So let me boil it down to the four pillars that you will need to consider, whether you're wondering if you want to keep seeing somebody or not, if you want to give them a second chance, or if you're in your partnership and you've been hitting a roadblock. Let's see here. Oh, $10. Hi, we just mentioned you. Hello, dear Jillian. How are you doing? Um, hello and love to Susan and all the Susanites. I'm mostly lurking due to work. <laughs> this is so great. Love this topic. Previously wasting time in unsuitable relationships was one of my biggest dating errors before I met my fiance. It can happen. Don't give up on love. Always work on yourself, but then get a good tool set for how you calibrate your time and your energy within the relationship model. Jillian, thank you so much for your generosity. Not only that, your time. Oh, Annie, QT, always talking to you in the Dating Games Guide. Um, oh, Dating Games Guide is wonderful. You guys are going to get a huge update to the Dating Games Guide in August. I have so much more material now that I've learned I can put that in. And the Older Women, Younger Men Dating, game, um, dating Guide, I've added uh, 27 new videos. So we will keep adding to these. These are not static products. Let me read what Annie says here. Um, Annie says, I'm really looking forward to finally having a real relationship to ask myself if it's worth saving. Okay, great. Um, you're so welcome. Thank you for all you do. Well, I just have the best group of people. Pippa, hello, Susan. Looking gorgeous as usual. Can I ask you something, please? I met a guy, but a member of his family is in prison. Okay. This has put me off him, but I'm unsure of the risk factor. Any advice? What's he in prison for? Is it drug related? Uh, 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 listen, if the entire family is problematic, okay, let me back up. You're going to make a judgment call over what, first of all, how much is this guy worth to you? If he passes all the bars for what you want, we can't help the family that they come from. But what I'm going to talk about today is the safety, security, and sanity aspect. If by sheer association with a family, a family unit, or even more so, family thought system, that it's okay to cut corners. It's okay to like take from the office. It's okay to like cheat on your taxes. Like I saw it there and nobody did much about it. So I just took it. I mean, you have to figure out what exactly you're getting into. The bottom line of all of this is, is this person worth it? You're going to go through challenges with whomever you are with. That's not going to change. We ask ourselves, are these the kinds of challenges I want to have? And I think you don't know this person well enough and you don't know the family well enough. You know, you shake any family tree, you're going to get an alcoholic or 15 that fall out. You're going to get a drug addict. You're going to get, you know, somebody in prison. I mean, is the mentality of your guy separate and apart from that family? It's a long thing. We'd have to fit. There are tons of factors for you to consider, but I'm so glad you're here today. So we're going to talk about this for the show. And if you have any questions again, let me know updates on the dating guides. Did you see them? Okay. Yes, they'll be coming. And, Listen, those of you who buy the Dating Games Guide and you buy Older Women, Younger Men, at the top price, you paid $49, okay? But do you know you can talk to me directly? This is why I do that. If you have a question about something in the guide, 
I get a notification immediately. I jump online and then I talk to you, okay? Linda Brown, we love you. Oh my God, $50. Doll, I mean, I, I love your investments. I love your commitment to this. Please, please, anything that you have to ask, please. Oh, I love that. I love, I'm, being the, 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 I'm all excited. I see these little hearty things. Linda, thank you so much, my dear. If you're in the New York City area, you please, please let me meet you in person for the meet and greet on August 2nd, 6 to 8 p.m. Financial District. Okay. Thank you so much, my dear. Any questions you have? So let me start. I have Susan's Four Pillars. Now, you may have your own stuff, but this is what I think are the basic things to discuss. This challenge, this issue, this thing that you're worried about, is it temporary or is it permanent? Is whatever is happening that's creating, I mean, is your partner temporarily out of work so they're just being really down and bitchy? Is it permanent? Do they have a condition or a dispositional trait? Do they have a, a form of illness that, that is directly impacting the relationship that cannot be altered, that cannot be fixed, that is way too much for you? And normally this would be in if they've developed some kind of mental disorder that is so far beyond your being able to handle your side of it. But it could be any factor. Okay, uh, is and when I say is it temporary or is it permanent, there are people who marry, who partner, and their mate has a horrific situation financial, um, legal, uh, medical, and but the person they love is intact, the situation is difficult, it's horrible, it's nothing they wanted, but the human with whom they are interacting, that's their mate. That, that They've got your back, you've got theirs, and you hold hands and you go through it together, and it's what they say, better or worse. There are gonna be times that it's worse. Then there's the other case where you're stepping into something new and you're looking at the entire terrain saying, oh my God, there are so many issues in this environment, in the mentality, in the lifestyle. I'm looking at something that is like, I'm walking into so much of an upfront compromise mm -hmm. that me managing this relationship and getting it to growth to, we're not just talking stability. We're talking to ascend, co-creative growth, higher level, wonderful stuff. You know, we don't want to just, all of you here, you're not here because you're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, come home, crack open a beer, it's cool, whatever, just don't hit me. You're not doing that. You want a, you want a functional partner that brings out the best in you, that you bring out the best. You're looking for, I think most everybody here could be happy being single. They want to have somebody that enhances their life. And if that person doesn't enhance your life, make your heart sing, why? Why are you putting up with the nonsense? So when I say temporary or permanent, let's take a look at lifestyle, okay? Are there criminal elements, right? Are they involved in gang-related stuff? Like you're stepping into that or you're in it by association. Do they have friends that could come through the door any day and because of drugs or, or alcohol or something create violence? You, you know, you leave your house and you come back and your partner is there and they've got like some party going on. People are stealing from you. I mean, this is stuff, this is unnecessary. You don't need to have those kinds of things. There's such a selection out here or be alone. So drug addiction, alcoholism, are they willing and able? We'll get to that later. But is this a condition that is absolutely permanent? It is not changeable or is it something that could change? Okay, then that's number one. Any questions about that so far? 
by the dating guide. Susan sends personalized audio advices. Yes, and video too when I have my makeup on. <laughs> Growth is oxygen for fulfilling relationships. I love this. Winter Queen, happen to love your name. Hello, Susan. Glad to see you live. Thank you. Winter Queen. Uh, I like the name. Got to tell you. Okay. Okay. So number one is, is it temporary or permanent? Okay. You got to figure that out because this you're now you're taking on a lot. Lisa, thank you, Susan, and everyone love your guidance. Love it. I'm seeing some names here I haven't seen before, so I'm very excited. Two, do the issues, and this is important. This is your bottom line. Do they affect your safety, your sanity, or your security? Those are my three S's. And I think if you follow my work, <laughs> any one that 900 videos, you, you probably heard that someplace else. That's, that is the bottom, bottom line. That's not even like, oh, do they make me happy? And do we go on great trips? And are they cute? This is like safety, security, sanity. Let's start with safety. Do they have a lifestyle? Are, did they, are they getting involved in some business activity, business activity that's terrifying you? That your safety could be at risk through the people they know or hang out with? Theft, abuse, whatever. Uh, you know, scams, fraud. It, it, it's, it's complicated these days. Your safety. Are you safe in your home? Not only their lifestyle, but with them. Safety. Security. Do, are you secure in this relationship? Is there anything about this relationship that's making you always feel like you're walking on eggshells? Because that is a no, 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 no. So sometimes you feel good. And other times you feel terrified. You're in a not good situation. Because love relationships are not conditional like that. If you are experiencing reward and punishment, modulating your behavior to keep them happy, if you are spending all of your time trying to manage their emotions, because believe me, I know this one. Oh my God, do I know this one. And I'm exhausted by it, not only in romance, but in friendships. If holding up your boundaries, and asserting yourself and, and having just a semblance of relaxation means that you are battling a volatile personality, um, moodiness that's unnecessary because they're just so bloody selfish. Like I really don't understand about human behavior. Like if somebody's having a bad day, why do we all have to pay for your bad day? Contain it. Contain it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never understood this. It's a lack of comportment. It's a lack of manners. It's a lack of social thoughtfulness. I mean, it's just the way it is, okay? So safety, security, and sanity. Are they playing mind games with you? Are you not sure if they're playing mind games with you? That, that means they're really good, or that means you're a newbie and you're unaware. Um do you somehow feel less like yourself? Do you feel like you're losing who you are in this relationship? Are you accommodating them? This is people pleasing candidate. Yep. Survival skills. Many of us survived our childhood by learning to modulate our power, our impression, to pull back, to get out of the way, to overlook the bad behavior, abusiveness of others, because to shine the finger on them meant abuse for you. This is longstanding. And no matter how functional you could be in life today, there are remnant pieces of it. And if you are in the dating process and you have a choice, choose to go in a direction that is good and positive and productive. It will feel different. It's not going to have the highs and lows. So please don't confuse the highs and lows of chaos, drama, of punishment and reward, because that's what people set up when they're trying to control you and manipulate you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Punishment and reward. You're being rewarded for compliant behavior mm -hmm. and you're being punished when you're not. And punishment can mean 
um, the silent treatment, pulling away, refusing sex, any one of these things. Okay. So safety, sanity, and security, ask yourself. And again, new people meeting somebody, you don't have to go there. You've got no commitment to them. Those of you in an existing relationship, when something goes off, you are going to jump to pillar number three, which in Susan's world is, is your partner willing and able to seek improvement? Now, I'm considering from this conversation that it's not about you, okay? It could be about you, but we're just, this is you analyzing your situation, okay? Um, let me see. Oh, Mito Sweden, hi! Muscles in the house. Dear Susan, I, I found my twin flame in Spain. Oh, my goodness. Never experienced these emotions. Thank you for all your great advice and your help. Love from Sweden. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, hey, though. Okay. Um, oh, my goodness. Love the hearts. I am so happy. We have to chat about this. We have to figure out what else is going on. I'm very happy for you. Thank you for this. I love the consistency of recognizing your names. And so don't be shy. If you haven't spoken up, say hi. You're in good company here. You have friends all around you. And B and Gwyneth, make sure that it's always safe. So I'm very happy. See, people are finding love. This is great, great, great. All right, so let's go back to are they willing and able to seek improvement? For example, you have a partner, you're in a relationship, you've got a partner and they injured their back at work. And so they were put on some, you know, oxycodone or whatever, they've been put on oxy. And so they, they're they on medication and now you've noticed their personality changing and they're, you think they've developed an addiction, but they're denying it or they're not getting off it or they're trying to create new reasons to get another prescription. And you see a problem, drugs, alcohol, compulsive gambling, um, philandering, whatever, whatever the issue is that's in them, even if it's temper, uh, impatience, um, cruelty, whatever, well, that's, there's no excuse for that. You get out. But, but let's say something is happening. Are they willing to help improve this thing to get the relationship back on track. So they've got a glitch. Are they willing? Then the second part is if they're willing, that's fabulous. Okay. They passed bar number one, number two, are they able? Some people can't break their addiction and eventually no matter how they try or no matter how much denial they go into and refuse to try, they're unwilling or they're unable and it destroys the relationship because you don't have a complete person that you're working with. So if your partner has a condition or even a disposition that is so problematic that it is coming up as a recurring issue in this relationship and you've been vocal and you've called attention to it and you've stated it because you have to do that part first. I know it's uncomfortable. I can do this very easily with men. It's really hard for me to do this with women. Oh, of course, of course, yeah. But it's, you know, I just tend to back away. It's like if I have to put up too many, like I don't, I don't even want to deal with it anymore. I don't want it. I think, and too, as an adult, at this age, I don't want to teach you how to be a human being. I don't want to teach you how to have manners. It's not my job to teach you to be thoughtful. I like my life. I can do without you easily. If, if serenity and happiness, I'm, I'm getting on my own through my work, through my associations with people that are nice to me, why would I bother trying to educate somebody to be kind, to be thoughtful, if it's not inherently in their skill set? There are individuals who have dispositional traits that are truly baked into them. It's part of the best part, worst part. For example, there are people who are so impulsive, so wanting to achieve whatever they want, 
that they do not recognize the collateral damage that they cause all around them because they barrel through to get what they want. And it's like, oh yeah, I haven't paid attention to my family for ages, but you know, they'll put, I'm, they'll put up with me or, oh, you know, I never call her, but she knows I'm working, but you know, oh, whatever, I'll just, uh, uh, my work comes first or, or, or they have a disposition that they so want what they want that they don't care. They literally don't care because they can't see. They're blinded to what you need and what you want because they want what they want and they are not happy till they get it. And they're moody and bitchy and horrible until they do. And then when they get what they want, then they're nice and sweet. But if that's the cycle you're going through with a friend, with a family member or with a partner, that doesn't change. It's really hard to change a core disposition. So I'm one of the few people, you know, I, uh, my friend, so Jonathan asked like cool guy, any of you that, you know, especially he does um, straight women who want to date men and he does mature women over 40. That's his gig. But you know, he's so cool. He always says to me, Susan, your SEO absolutely sucks. He said, you, you just suck. He said, you've got these weird titles. I can't tell you how much I enjoy talking about things that are never discussed that I feel are so important. Nobody talks about disposition. Disposition defines whether we can get along with this other person. What is their day-to-day -day disposition? Are they sunny? Are they moody? Because if they got moody days, we're riding the roller coaster like this. You're either avoiding them to stay out of confrontation or you got to barrel through to fight them to get your point across, to just hold ground for who you want to be in that relationship. So nobody talks about this stuff. Nobody talks about power and equity. I think power, economic inequity, I think being an alpha female, I think a lot of these are valuable discussions, but people don't want to talk about it. No, who wants to talk about that? Yeah, we don't like that. It's a small subject. I know I have a lot of really weird one-off subjects that are really specific. But the overall thing is that if you guys have 2 million videos on how to get him back, how to make her love you, you don't need one more. So this is why I try and talk about stuff that's a little bit different. But I think it's far more effective. Okay. These, it, it's not, it is the big picture, but it's also these little things that sometimes we don't have words to identify because we don't really know what it is. We just know there's something we're trying so hard, but there's something that's not working. And we, and then we hear it and we're like, Oh my God, that's what it is. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve here. All right. Um, so your partner has to be not only willing, but able to do their part of the work in this relationship dynamic, if you're going to salvage and save this relationship, okay? Now, they may, they probably need your assistance. They need your support. If the two of you work as a unit toward the betterment of your relationship, and if you can isolate that this thing is problematic, um, they need your support. They don't need your berating them. And oftentimes it's in our conversational tone, the way we frame it, that makes our partners not want to work with us. Um, you know, uh, I had a friend who, who used to yell at me for certain things. I called him the hammer, okay? He's my continental gigolo, but he was just like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, the hammer does not work. And when he stopped hammering at this stuff, I did it because I, I was a little stubborn. Okay, so your partner might be stubborn. If the way you've approached the situation that you've isolated as being problematic, and this is making me pull away from you, this is taking from our happiness, this is making me grouchy, this is making me reactive, this is making me scared, I don't want to be that way, it doesn't have to be that way, you're not looking good doing this, I see a problem here, I want you to feel better, I want you to be stronger, I want you to be the best you, and this is what it is, let's look at this. Tell me how I can help you. Be your best self. Be your best self in this relationship for us, 
be your best self. I'm here. I'm your partner. Now, those of you new into that relationship, think about it. Are they worth it? Okay. Hey, Susan, you've really helped me a lot. I love your videos. Eileen here from the Philippines. Salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is wonderful. I hope I'm saying that properly. Um, this is perfect timing for this advice. I love this. I So again, my buddy Jonathan goes, Susan, just, just copy Matthew Hussey and do whatever he did this week. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. If, I, if, I, if this is what I have to do in this business, I will uh, stop and ride horses and play golf. So today I need to attend to those of you in relationship. Okay. I'm actually a relationship expert. I had to address dating because very few people were in relationships. So I had to change my whole thing. I hate dating. I blame you that you hate it too. It's a lot of work. But in my time period, guys always approached me and they would just be like jumping up and down. Do you want, do you want a relationship? And they were easier to get into than they are today. Okay. But then you also have the skills to do that. We've talked a lot about that. Okay. So Salama. Okay, I hope I said this right. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so we have here one, two, and three. I'm going to come into number four, and then I'm just going to open it up to all your questions. One is the is the issue temporary or permanent? That way you know what you're looking at. Two, do these issues affect your safety, sanity, and security? Newbies entering a relationship, you got a lot of those going on. Run like hell. Three, is your partner willing and able to seek improvement? That's very telling for the relationship, okay? And before I go on, one side note. It is true that you can fall in love with somebody that's really not your match. You love each other, but it's not a workable match. And the way I'm going to frame this in some of my future conversations, this has to do more with um, people that have been friends, uh, that I pulled away from because of certain behaviors that I, I have to come to the forefront and tell them, you know, I, I have to do the work. And there, of course, in the past when I've done this, there's been an enormous reactivity. So, you know, I, I'd long decided, do I tell the truth because they freak out or do I just like slow fade? I'm again, relationships got no problem. Men got no problem. Uh, with friends, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, you know, because we get very close. So I think what you have to do is consider, is this something they could even change? Like, again, disposition. I have no right in a friendship. Now, friendships are, how do I say? We choose our friends, Correct. Unlike a mate that will sometimes be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work this out with you. We, I think there's more in, in the marriage model. There's more of a, you know, like we're going to try and really do this seriously. But in, in, our, in our casual friendships, I think the question is, do I want, is, is it worth saving? Is there enough here that I can deal with? with the dispositional issues that I find so problematic, thinking they're probably not able to change that. Because here's the thing, am I gonna ask them to change it for me? For me, for my disposition, for my comfort, I would like you to change for me. Do I even have a right to ask somebody that? And this is where I go back and forth. And this will be the decision you will say too, I don't have a definitive answer. You, you will look at the entire composite of this individual and you will think to yourself, overall, is there something enriching in this experience? Is there something comfortable in this experience? Is there, we have our spats, we have our times that we pull away and we get back together again. Is there, is there something worth saving? Do I still find value in this connection? Okay, those, that's how we ask the question because you will change throughout the course of your life. What you put up with younger, you may not put up with when you're older. And it may be the opposite, that what you were so hard and, you know, like it's gotta be this and it's gotta be that. When you're younger, you live longer and you kind of understand humanity and you're like, well, 
It's got many shades of gray. Don't get, you know, 100% like fantastic all the time. So these, this is, these are the questions you ask yourself. Okay. Then the last one. Oh, good Lord. 140. Zar, how, I don't think you're Zar. You're Allie. Allie, hi. Hi, my dear. How are you doing? I'm female 21. She is 52. We stopped talking because of her husband. Okay, hang on here. We had a strong bond. She is separated now and we're talking again. My advice to to make her feel cared for again with without being overwhelming. Okay, wait, I'm not sure I understand. I'm feeling like I'm going to stop talking. Okay, just be her friend. Um, something in the husband, something with who, I'm thinking somebody she had to be in order to be with her husband, she probably changed who she was, who you knew her before to be and then who she had to be for him. She probably lost herself, started adopting his attitudes, his whatever. So now she's coming back to herself. Just be there, be there and reaffirm when you think as a dear friend who cares about her, that she's on track, give her a lot of support, give her a lot of verbal praise for the strength that it took and, and also be there for her when she's, you know, the thing about separating about ending anything is that no matter how bad it is, you're going to hit those days where you're like, Oh God, I'm so alone. Or did I make the right move? They were because your mind starts to bring up all the positives. You start to remember, Oh, but it was so good in the beginning. Then you get soft and then you start reading a book on spirituality and then you're flooded with openness. And you're like, Oh, maybe it wasn't that bad. So just be her constant friend. Okay. Let me see a Jillian, $5. Hi, Jonathan and Matthew. Okay. Hang on. Are great. Yet you have your own amazing style. Stay with it. Different concepts appeal to different individuals. No cookie cutter. Uh, Jillian, thank you so much. And I do love Matthew Hussey. He really is to me the gold standard because he has really good material because he's not so basic. If you listen to him, he has great SEO. But if you listen to him, he, he goes deeper. And sometimes he'll take a cut where I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. So those two guys I like. Um, I actually started recording these never listening to anyone else. I actually try not to, if this makes sense. I know that sounds weird. Uh, it's kind of more like empirical knowledge. I try to, I figure there's so much of the same. If the same worked, we wouldn't be here. So I try not to listen to what others are saying and simply interpret from my perspective. And, and I oftentimes don't take in outside information of, to be swayed because I, 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 I want to use words that might be new. I want to use words that might be different. I want to see things differently. And if I'm looking the same as everybody else, I'm going to be giving you the same answer. So yes, you're right. And Jillian, Thank you so much. I do adore you. Okay. Nathusa. Hello, gorgeous. What is the best strategy to not feel guilty about setting boundaries and choosing your own happiness versus pleasing your partner? Oh my goodness. You are changing. <laughs> you are changing. You are so open. Um, I struggle with boundaries too. I will stop in the middle of my day when I have a deadline because somebody's in pain and they need me and it's exhausting. And then I'll stay up late. I'm not good at that, but it's also my best quality. So for you, because you're choosing partners, if you don't set the boundaries for how you want to be treated, ultimately you won't get the kind of relationship you want. It's harder to have let things go and then go back in and reconnect, recorrect a person and say, by the way, I know we've been doing this for about five years, but I'm not comfortable with it. That's a much harder discussion to have. And um, you can't, well, you're going to feel guilty. I, so I've got to be honest with you. 
when you change a behavior, when you've been other directed to accommodate others um, and programmed as a survive, it was a survival skill. So let's, you lived, whatever you had to do, that personality type was your childhood survival from bullying, from abusive parents, from violence, whatever. It had a really important, it was not a casual decision. You just don't end up people pleasing because you're like, oh, I want to be, it was a necessity. So good on you that you found your survival. Now as an adult, it gets a little tricky. We have to go back in and readjust it. But we will always feel guilty if we've been other directed when we start to be individually directed. I remember, okay, so I had a friend that had a crisis. My phone goes, he had a crisis. I'd already dealt with it five times, but it was a new, a new chapter of the crisis. And because he's out in California, my phone is off at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. That's me time. And somehow the call came in. I'm like, oh, shit. And I really had to struggle. I knew he needed me. Then he started texting saying, if you have time, please call. And I just, it was so hard for me to do. I could have, but I was exhausted. And I didn't want to go another hour. And I just thought, it was hard. I felt guilty, but then I thought, no, he'll survive. I'll call him in the morning. He'll survive. He'll figure it out. We're adults. This is not a child who got lost. Okay. So when you're making a correction to take care of yourself, you will feel guilty. But then take a look at all those people that do it with wild abandon. Don't give a shit about you. They don't feel guilty. They don't feel guilty at all. So this is this is part of the transit. Don't worry about it. You're going to feel it. Um, you have to be happy or you're not going to be happy for your partner. Todd, I see you communicating with me. Thank you. Um, I think you've done this through LinkedIn. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, which is me and the wisdom to know the difference. Yep. You're a friend. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're a friend of Bill's or you have that information. Perfect. Stacy Brown. Hey, just had a conversation with someone of how when I was younger, I saw life in black and white. Now older, I definitely see shades of gray. That's why it becomes, the, the longer we live, like the, the more that I do this work, I see the totality of humanity. And it there are very few things that I don't understand. I, I have to figure out where it came from. Doesn't mean I want it. Doesn't mean I accept it. Doesn't mean I like it. But I, but I, I understand, I understand it, you know, um, and you're correct. Um, Susan, I did ask him to change something. Hang on, let's see, for my comfort. And I feel like it was restrictive, but he agreed to it. Okay, sometimes I wonder if my trust issues hold him back. Trust issues are something we have to work out for ourselves. Okay, so many of us, many of you all get wounded out there having trust issues. I, I tend to trust right away at Minnesota. I, I get spanked the other way, like, oh shit, they really didn't they really didn't care. Or they really weren't here to do something good. You know, so I, I kind of I go in open and then have to learn to adjust. So other people are start like this and then start to learn to open. But trust, we can't trust others. We have to trust ourselves. Is the ride that you're taking with somebody so problematic for you to trust them that you can't do it? Is it justifiable? Do, they, do you have just cause to think that this individual is untrustworthy? Or is it remnant stuff from your childhood? You, this is the distinction with you doing your work. If you're discovering that I have chronic trust issues, that means you have a wound that has to be attended to because you'll never be able to see clearly when you go with your own story that you superimpose. There are people that will get involved with and they're going to betray you, all of you. No matter how good you are, no matter how loving you are, you're going to get screwed over by people. You're going to get lied to, you're going to get used, you're going to get conned, you're going to get scammed at some point to a greater or lesser degree. This is the world that we live in. How you choose to interpret that and how great that wound is to you is something you can do about. 
you can do something about it. Okay, so that's our individual work. Now let me get back just to the last thing. And it's so great to have all this conversation. What do you do when your partner won't stop bringing up the past? Do you tell them to stop bringing up the past? Is it the past that they're... So is it the past that they're beating you up over? Because I, I tell people, don't, don't beat your partner like a bad dog. If there's been something wrong in the past and you said you'd work it out and you're not, you don't get to go back there. All right, last thing, and then I'll turn it all over to you, okay? Um, at the end of all this, do you care to continue trying? That's my number four. Do you care to continue trying? Sometimes you look at the person, friend, relative, uh, lover, partner, and you're just like, I, it's not really worth it to me. Whatever I have to go through with you is not, I, I'm not doing it. That's the bottom line, right? Sometimes you don't care to fix it. Sometimes something goes wrong and you're like, oh, good. That's my excuse to get out. Remember, in a relationship, all of you have the freedom to pull the trigger to leave any moment you want. All you need is an excuse. And if you've been with somebody more than three days, you've got an excuse. Someplace, someplace. I used to say women have an excuse by 5 p.m. every night <laughs> to get rid of the partner they've got. It's just which one, which one is the straw that breaks the camel's back? We're looking for quality of relationship here. And I think everybody that's on this channel that focuses here, that follows this work, I'm taking it as a given, according to the level of my conversation, that you have spiritual and psychological awareness and insight. You have a fertile mind, you have a growth mindset, and you are looking to be the best version of yourself here, okay? This is the conversation that we're having. So this is how we measure, is this relationship worth saving? Okay, those are the four pillars. Now, Matthew is talented at interweaving emotional outlook with the best way to proceed on a practical level. He's just so good, he's handsome, Great, uh, great off the cuff, and that's a super intelligence. Fabulous media, mediagenic, great information, and started from because he he started with the pickup artists. You all don't know that, but that's they started in podcasts and grew. But the machinery behind him is phenomenal. I mean, he's got the whole system set up. He's got everybody working for him. Now he's moving into lifestyle, so. The way I work is the most tedious and the least economically viable one-on-one. -on -one. But I've long wanted to be the emergency room. You come in, you pay a fee, but you come out 45 minutes later or an hour later and you're fixed. Could I work with you six months for five, ten figures or five, six figures? Why do I want to take that much time? You shouldn't have to take that much time. I say, I don't even believe that therapy should be ongoing. I think if the therapist is working well, you should go get healthy and then take your show on the road. And then you see another glitch like, oh, let, let me get a tune-up, right? Um, Five dollars, Nafthusa, hello, dear. Is it naive of me to search for a soul connection in this materialistic and superficial world? No. I am meeting men who are after my looks, money, and your problem with being beautiful is, I, I don't know what pond you're fishing in. Um, I, I have somebody, I like her, I love her personality, but she's so dangerous for me. Every time she comes near me, she somehow gets me in trouble, somehow, some way, so that I'm cleaning up a damage. Doesn't mean to, wouldn't hurt me for a minute in her life. She's the Instagram 
You know, in Scram Girls, she's a walking, talking, I'm here, I'm there, I'm here. Only, you know, billionaires, that's it. All the right places, every charity event, everything, everything, everything. That's where she positions herself. And that is the top of the line pecking order that I think, I think this was going to be another discussion, but let me get off on something here. I, I want to suggest something. You're obviously meeting a successful men, all right? If you're a beautiful woman, use it. It doesn't last forever. If that's the first, men are very visual, and if that's what they see, let them come in. But then you are the one. It's not about them. You're the one that looks at them. And I have a conversation I've never had, and this is another one, right, like disposition. It's about respect and admire. Can you admire these men? The man who's looking at you, and he wants you for your looks, do you admire him? I don't mean what he's achieved. I don't mean the money he has or the clothes or the environment that he wants to take you to. As a human being, his character, his worth, the man inside, that's independent of economics. To have a soulmate, you need a soul connection, but their soul has to be alive. Their soul has to be beating and alive. Now, there are men, I'm in New York City, I think you are too, but I'm not sure. And if you are, please come to the meet and greet on August 2nd. And again, write me, Susan Winter, no, no wait, which media, Susan Winter, and I'll be posting about it. Um, but you, you, you're going to have to be able to connect. Now, some of these guys in New York City, the top, the highest level guys, they are so used to the revolving door of materialistic women that are here to utilize them to just get to the next level. You know, maybe have a, a child because the guy wasn't paying attention one night and then get set financially for the rest of their life, never marry them or get married and get a quick divorce. Yeah, so there's like, they're so used to being used and conned that unfortunately many of these men, and I've worked with them, turn around and say, well, she's going to use me. Why don't I just use her? I'm going to use her for her looks and dump her because I know she's going to do the same to me for my money. If this is the crowd you're swimming in, you're not going to find that soul connection because those guys are wounded. But if you can make, if you can connect to their heartbeat and you can find the quality human being that you love inside there, there has to be a human that you can connect to, not just the artifice, the bullshit on the outside. We've become very accustomed to this, uh, it, you know. I have people tell me stories about these disastrous relationships. Um, I got pushed into Instagram in 2019, so I have very little activity on Facebook. But I have friends who are, because Facebook's more for older people, and they say, oh my God, I know these people that have the most violent, horrible relationship, they're married, and if you see their Facebook posts, they're happy together on their trip, and they're happy pictures, and there's such a word. She said, beneath the surface, I talk to this woman all the time, she hates him, he hates her, oh my God. You know, we're in a time period where it's hard to know what's real anymore. You must find that resonant other, or you're not going to be fulfilled if that's what you want. So I hope that helps you. Find their heartbeat and, and you're judging them. Let them let them come in because they like what they see, but then it's your job to find their character. Who are they as a human being? I think respect it. You have to respect the partner you're with. Um, Lefthusa says, um, and she says, uh, Wait, do I rules? Um, why do I feel more obsessed with the person after they broke up with me? Oh, that's easy, Eric. You wanted to win. That kicks in the ego. Everybody always looks better running away. They set up their value system. It's like a high value person. They always look better leaving. Let them go. Let them go. It, you have to realize this is what you're working with. If somebody breaks up with you and they dump you because they don't find that 
you're compliant, they don't want you, they're not sure what they want, please go. Open the door. Give them a little shove. Great. Next. You only want them because you can't have them. Okay? And if they come back, you think you want them, but it's the same problems you had before. This is such a trap. It's an ego trap. So just get out of it. All right, next one. Um, I don't know if it's worth saving. When my other half is forcing me to take her father's last name after marriage, I think that's a little bit weird and kind of a deal breaker. Forcing you. Are, are you guys... Oh, wait, are you already married and you already have a married name and now you got to take another name? I'm, I'm unclear as to what that is. But so the real question is, you don't want somebody forcing you to do anything. But here's what I need to know if I were working with you. You need to ask her, why do you need this? It's a, it doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel natural. Why do you need me to be this? What, what is she trying to accomplish with her father that she's actually using you to do instead? Because there's she doesn't have an allegiance to you right now. She's got an allegiance either to her father or to the family or she wants to preserve the family or something. I don't know. You're going to have kids together and then she's got to have the father's name so that the line continues. But there's some. Why does she need that? Explain to me why you need what you need and then maybe I'll get on board with it. This is why always when you give your partner directives and you need something and you say, listen, honey, I need this or I need you to do that, always give them the why. Or we're going to be resistant. If you really understood the why, you go like, oh, wow, you're the last of that name. There's no more in the whole world and your whole family's counting on you. Oh, sh well, I could hyphenate it and never use it. Well, I don't know, but you you, you have a better idea of what's going on. Um, <laughs> B says to Nathusa, just be aware you're searching for a treasure in a pile of rubbish. It's not easy, but you wouldn't want to take the rubbish home, either the treasure or nothing. I love this. I love this. Okay. Um, it seems to me like men who are older, I'm going for 10 years older, are very financially focused. I had a man ask me on a date to invest in his What? 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 Well, yeah. Where are you? What what sites are you on? This is like, will you book a session with me at some point? Or like, let's work together. I mean, this is, I, I, this is just crazy stuff. This is crazy. This is crazy making. Okay. So are there any more questions on those of you who are thinking about fulfillment comes from within first? Todd, I'm with you on that. Uh, let's see. I'm not so into a guy who is not into me. Good on you. That should be a turnoff for us. In fact, I regret that I didn't dump him before he did. <laughs> yeah. They seem to auto-eject just before I ended. Damn, you got to move a little faster next time. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Who cares? Um, so I asked a friend of mine, you know, like, was your is your ego still in this? Or like, let them think they dumped you. Who cares? If you don't care about them, you really don't care. Their little ego needs that win. They probably felt that you were going to leave, and so they pulled the cord first for their little, for their little, you know, insecure ego. Thank you. Yes, we are married. Her reason was I moved countries for you. The least you can do is take my dad's last name, and she's very controlling now, which she wasn't before while dating. Welcome to when they feel secure. Hmm. But why the father's last name? I mean, so she wants you to take her last name. Why don't, like you're not fighting for your last name. So sometimes what people do is hyphenate their name and just drop it. Like if you, here's a good excuse. I wouldn't change my name for somebody else because I have an identity that's Susan Winter. I wouldn't do that. Uh, many people do, and especially if they're marrying up and they're marrying somebody famous, why not? Okay, that was a perk you didn't have before. Um, but you got to talk about the other things that are controlling. I think you need to go into couples therapy just you know a couple times. But get really, get really clear in your speaking points when you're communicating on things like this. These are sticky issues. Get clear on, here's why this 
is offensive to me and why I want what I want. Because my name is my identity in business and I don't feel any connection to your father or your side of the family. Sorry, I felt a connection to you. And then she'll say, you know, whatever she says, okay? So you've, you've got to have speaking points. We've got to know why. Um, they feel they're not up to the task. Okay, you're all talking to each other. Susan, free our love. We adore you. Okay. All right. So everybody, that's about it today. I thank you, everyone, in the super chat. I thank Gwyneth and B again. Here's the heads up. Uh, meet and greet in person. I have a venue for two hours. There's no fee for this. It's a cash bar in the financial district. It is Wednesday, August 2nd, between 6 and 8 p.m. If you are interested in New York City, you will write to media at susanwinter.net. Include the head, heading NYC. Give me your LinkedIn profile, your, so, your socials, just this is for verification. We check a little bit out and then we'll you know, get back to you, okay? Um, there's a cap on how many people I can have. Singapore, if you're in Singapore, you're flying to Sin Singapore, you're in Asia and you want to come to Singapore. January 25th through February 2nd, I will be available for one hour consultations in person and I will also be doing a meet and greet there. Date not chosen, um, location not chosen yet. All right, older women, younger men, um, use the discussion thread to chat me up. I'll give you a, either a written response, an audio, or a video. Uh, same is true with the dating games guide. Consultations still on my website, individuals. That's it. That's about all I have to say for today. So you're all perfect, wonderful, and ready to go, ready to face the world. Okay. Yes, uh, Chasten, I do private sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Okay. All right, everyone. This is wonderful. Rahul, you are welcome. Everybody, Naftusa. Oh, I love the little pictures of me and Nika. And thank you all. Come back next week. And please, um, if you need a consultation, don't suffer and wait. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. And if you can come and meet me in New York, that'd be awesome. Thank you, everyone. B. Gwyneth, thank you so much for another fabulous Thursday night with you. And thank you, Germany, for being in the house. Thank you, everyone. My very best to all of you. Thank you for being such wonderful subscribers to this channel and followers and YouTube members. I thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.